Hey guys, welcome back to Slow Travel Chronicles. My name is Stephanie and this is my husband Garrett. And in our video today, we are going to discuss our time in Rome, Italy. We spent a month there in March of 2023 and we went there. That was our last stop and on our tour of Italy. And we wanted to share what we liked and what we didn't like. Yeah. And I would say one of the things that I liked about Italy, or specifically Rome, is the weather when we got there. Um, I know that's not specific to a city, but it kind of helps with the overall feel. It was just coming into spring, so that kind of gave me a little pep in my step. No more dull, dreary winter days. And I found it yeah. to be a very walkable and easy to navigate city. Specifically, our Airbnb was really had a really great location, I thought. Yeah, we were about 15 minutes north of Vatican City near the Cipro, Cipro, however you pronounce it, metro mm -hmm. station, right by a huge care for. Great neighborhood. The sidewalks were wide. It was clean. It was clean. As Stephanie mentioned, the weather was like in the mid-60s. You could walk around comfortably. It wasn't, you know, like 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit like it is in the summer. Um, and that really, I think, does make a big difference. So it wasn't really tourist season. It was kind of shoulder season, although we did get a lot of spring breakers the last yes. two weeks of March. Yes. But uh, overall, it wasn't too crowded except for some of the real popular areas, yeah. which you would expect. But overall, yeah, it was nice, clean, pretty. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say the only thing that I didn't like when I was there, we were coming back from one of the churches that we visited. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one. And we got on the subway. And the subway, like Garrett said, we were right by the subway. So we took it um, pretty much every day. We had a month-long pass, mm -hmm. which was super easy to use. But one day we were coming back from a church. And we went to one station. It was one of the main stations. And we were packed in there like sardines. Yeah. Like I even said, I want to get off. It was that claustrophobic. I never, um, on any of the other subway rides, feared of like being pickpocketed, but that would have been a perfect opportunity. Yeah. I mean, we were literally yeah. like on top of each other. That yeah. was the only thing I didn't like. If you don't want to be uh, packed in tight with 500 of your closest friends in a subway car, then don't get on the subway anytime near rush hour, because especially in the afternoon, I mean, Every afternoon, rush mm -hmm. hour, it was just packed tight. And then also you can tell when schools get out because when schools get out, all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's full of youngsters. But overall, it wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. It only was a problem, and I say a mild problem, maybe once a week or so mm -hmm. we got caught out when we were trying to get somewhere just at a time when the subway was being used heavily. Other times, not a problem. Yeah, but it was super walkable. We walked a lot of places mm -hmm. as well. Um, or we would take a short sub subway ride, get off, and walk around. So it was yeah. super easy to walk through. We did um, go to the Bergese Museum yeah. one day. That That's was nice. probably one of my favorite museums. Actually, we went there twice because we didn't buy tickets in advance yeah. thinking we didn't need to because we were in the off season and when we got there it was sold out so we yeah. ended up coming back a day or two later and going through that and there was a garden attached to it yeah the museum still had time restrictions so you would buy a ticket for a time slot and they were pretty much selling out every day um, likewise the coliseum you want to go on a tour of the Coliseum and you don't want to pay big bucks for a private tour, if you buy a ticket directly uh, from the Coliseum, you're going to get a time slot and they sell out pretty much every day. You just buy your tickets a week or two in advance. Speaking of the Coliseum, um, it's a two-day, like you'll probably be able to correct me, you buy the ticket to the Coliseum and the Forum and the Palatine Hill and we bought the ticket that we had 48 hours to use them. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing the Roman Forum in the Palatine Hill first. I went yeah. back to the Coliseum the next day. Mm -hmm. And we actually really liked, or at least I did, I liked uh, the Palatine Hill and the Roman Forum much better than the Coliseum. At least to me, I appreciated the Coliseum more on the outside than I did the inside. Yeah. If you uh, buy your tickets directly from the Coliseum, 
you're pretty much going to buy a combo ticket with Roman Hill and Palatine. No. Roman. Palatine Form and Roman shoot. Palatine <laughs> Hill and Roman Form, whether you want to or not. I mean, that's what they sell. They sell combo tickets. And uh, like Stephanie said, we selected the option where we had two days to use the tickets. I think we spent probably four hours or more in the Palatine Hill mm -hmm. Roman Forum area. And it was really nice. It wasn't too crowded. There were a lot of tour groups, but they were pretty easy to dodge because it was just it, such a large space. Mm -hmm. The Coliseum, you know, pretty much sells out pretty close to every day. Uh, they just heard people through there like cattle, here's the entrance, roll on through security, go get in line, just follow everybody else. And uh, I also agree the outside was kind of nicer. And I think part of it is, one, is the crowds. And two, I've seen so many pictures of it. When we walked in, we walked in, looked around, and went, wow, this is neat. Yep, looks just like all the pictures. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's a definitely a must-do must do. if you haven't been there. But don't expect, like, it to be the most awesome thing in the world unless you really love, like, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and we didn't get to go into the um, ground floor, the basement level. Mm -hmm. um, those were sold out when we bought our tickets. I think you probably could do that, do both in the same day, but we kind of preferred uh, doing it separate. Yeah. That way we, like, we were hot after we did Palatine Hill and the Roman Forum, and then we went and had some good food at a place Garrett found. Yeah. The, uh, the ticket options, basically, you know, you can do your basic tour of the Coliseum, or you can add the arena floor, or you can add the arena floor and the underground passages. We couldn't get the underground passages. In hindsight, I'm glad we didn't pay extra for it, because I could see the underground passages from where we were standing, and it was like, okay, got it. So, like Stephanie said, it worked out well. I'm glad we went. Um, but it's not something I ever feel like I have to go back to. Yeah, and then we went to the Spanish Steps one day, and like there's mm -hmm. a bit, lot of hoopla around the Spanish Steps, and I'm I'm glad we walked over there. But yeah. I think I could have passed on that. Like it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Now at the top of the Spanish Steps, we went. At the top to the right, there are these buildings that have like faces. I cannot think of the name of them right now. I'll put a picture in and I'll put the name of it. But mm -hmm. those were cool. Those were worth yeah. going over there to me. But I could have skipped the Spanish Steps personally. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't skip them. Um, we walked by them two or three times just when we were out and about doing other things. We really didn't make a special trip over there to see them. And I guess it's one of those things that it's so well known that everybody has to go there. I mean, that place is like a tourist magnet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, big, nice staircase. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Looks cool. You know, maybe if you go there at 6 in the morning when nobody's there, it would be really nice. But when you roll in and it's you know, packed. At, like at 10 in the morning and it's packed or at sunset and it's packed or at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and it's packed. Um, you couldn't appreciate it. Yeah. And it's and, and similar to the Trevi Fountain. Yeah. Really nice fountain. Beautiful, but dear God, there are people there at all hours of the day. I think the only exception is probably before 8 in the morning. You went one day that early, didn't you? No. Oh. Uh-uh. I thought about it, but I decided it was, you know, it's not worth the effort. It was a nice fountain. We went there. We looked at it. We passed by there all the we time. Drove, we walked by it. Drove by it. <laughs> we walked by it all the time. And it was crowded at all hours of the day. Um, we did meet somebody who went there at like at 7 in the morning, and he showed us a picture when he was there, and there was maybe 20 people there versus a couple hundred. So anyway, another must-do, but just know what you're getting into. Yeah. I would say one of my favorite things to do was the Mouth of Truth. That's kind of mm -hmm. um, a little quirky type of yeah. weird thing that Garrett doesn't really like to do, but he humors me and goes along. But it's this big sundial type of face, and th this stone is huge. And you go and you put your hand in the mouth, and the legend is if it closes its mouth, you're a liar. And, you know, it's just a photo op. It's free, so it's worth going over there. It's going to take you five minutes to get yeah. through the line. It was fun. They asked for donations. And then after we left there, we walked up a hill to a place to look sunset. Yep. It Orange Garden, Orange Park. That was the reason we went to the Mouth of Truth thing. It's because it was on the way to the park where I wanted to go. <laughs> so it worked out, and that was a really uh, beautiful place to yes. see sunset. 
Uh, the sunset and we were there, nothing spectacular. Uh, there were a lot of people that came up there to, to see the sunset, but you could spread out. Um, mm -hmm. They had a few people like people playing music for uh -huh. tips and it was fine. Yeah. They just kind of sat up and played some music and you know, a lot of people would come up in groups, look around for a bit and leave. Yeah. I would do that again. I oh, like yeah, that. For sure. And definitely. Um, we spent a lot of time um Basilicas. Yeah, we went to the four major basilicas. We took one day and we said, Okay, we're gonna go to the three major basilicas that you can get to off the subway. We just got up in the morning, hopped on the metro and went to each one. Um, liked them a lot. My favorite one was Saint John outside the walls. It was farther outside of town. When we went there, there was basically no one there. It was different from all the other ones that we saw. Large, wide open, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, if you're in Rome and you have time, you should definitely go see all the mm -hmm. four major basilicas. Um, of course, St. Peter's is one of the four. Everyone goes to St. Peter's, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, that's a definitely must do. It's the most massive building I have ever seen in my life. You look at it from the outside and you're like, yeah, big church. Then you get inside and you go, holy cow. It is This huge. thing is huge. Like you can't, we can't describe how uh -uh. big it is. No, I, I But it was beautiful and just yeah. massive. Like I could, mm -hmm. I, I would have to look up how tall the ceilings were, but they were yeah. like hundreds of feet easily. Yeah, I don't know. We, we walked past or by or through Vatican City several times a week mm -hmm. just because it was on the way from our Airbnb to the Old Town area. So we were constantly going by it mm -hmm. and uh, always a huge line to mm -hmm. get in. So we jumped right in line, got in in five or ten minutes, and it wasn't too crowded. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. We probably spent, what, 40 minutes or an so, hour, an yeah. hour walking around. We did not go into the Treasury Museum uh, just because we just didn't feel like it, mm -hmm. no particular reason. It's probably nice. Um, I really wanted to climb the dome, but there was a huge line to do that. And I really, I mean, it was an incredibly long yes. line. And I thought, you know, I'll just come back. If I really want to do this, I'll come back one morning and do it. Uh, but never got around to it. Um, I guess that's one of the things that when we travel so much, that sometimes we want to do things. And when we get there, we decide, nah, just don't feel like it. So mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't bother with it. Yeah. But uh, I think if you're going to go to St. Peter's, that you know, either go first thing in the morning before it opens, get in line so you mm -hmm. won't be in line long, or wait for like the last half hour or so, yeah. go in right at the end of the day because during the day it's just tour groups constantly going through. And uh, we noticed even we were in the Basilica, you could tell when the lunch rush or the after lunch rush started because all of a sudden, you know, we were in there for and you see the people with the 20 flags. minutes. And yeah, you can see the tour. It's like, oh, okay, there's a lot more people coming in now. It's time for us to go. So we also went to the Vatican. We booked that in advance. Um, what would you say, a month or two in advance? Probably two or three months in advance. The museum. The museum, thank you. Yeah, we went to the museum. And we looked online and decided, you know, this place gets really crowded during the day. We'd rather pay extra and quite a bit extra to go uh, in the morning. So we got the prime experience with breakfast. We got there about 7 in the morning. And I think, from what I could tell, they sold four prime experience with breakfast tours. And we just walked in, went through security, got our headset. And then every time a group of 20 got together, a guide would join you, and off they went. Mm -hmm. And I think we were in the third of the four groups mm -hmm. who went out that morning. And they space it. So as we walked through the museum, we were pretty much alone. And we didn't go through the entire museum. We went through all the major parts. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the highlights were the Sistine King Chapel, Chapel, the Raphael Rooms. And uh, our tour guide kind of just kind of timed it so we were far enough away from the group in front of us and far enough away from mm -hmm. the group behind us. We really didn't see anybody. And uh, it was really nice and well worth the money to do that. Um, the breakfast was so-so, but it was fine. And, um, you know, after breakfast, the guide said, hey, you guys, you know, you're free to stay in the museum all day, look mm -hmm. around. She recommended that we go to the art gallery because we didn't do that as part of the tour. So we went to the art gallery, and on the way there we got lost, and we walked to the Egyptian area, which mm -hmm. we really didn't care Heard to of, see yeah. that much. So we kind of hustled through it. And then I thought, well, well let's wh cut through the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> Let's, let's go back and let's get a map. 
because we didn't get a map when we got there because we were on tour. So we tried to walk up towards the front where they would have the map, but there were literally so many tour groups and people walking in. We were like, okay, we can't do this. We can't swim uphill. There's just way too many people. So then we, uh, I got online. I found an online map, and I was like, okay, now I know my way around. I kind of understood it, but with the little map on my phone, we're like, perfect. I went to the art gallery. It was nice. There were people there, but it wasn't crowded. Enjoyed it. Then we decided to go to the Contemporary Art Gallery, um, so. which was on the opposite side of the Sistine Chapel in the Raphael Rooms, meaning we had to walk through the uh, gallery of the maps and the Candelabra mm -hmm. area again, and it was just packed. Here's, I mean, holy moly. Here's a perfect example. When we went to the Sistine Chapel on the tour, we were able to sit along the wall and peacefully look at the ceiling. We could have stood in the middle of the room had we wanted to and had plenty of el We could have spun and done twirls and cartwheels in there. there was, when we walked back through, you could not. It was so yeah. jam-packed like sardines. It was a totally different experience. Uh, in, in the morning on the tour guides, they pretty much told everybody, just go sit on the benches. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of seats. Go sit on the benches. So really the only people standing up in the middle the and walking around are the tour guides. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like Stephanie said, when we came back about, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the morning, there was about a two-foot wide corridor that you could walk through, and it was, it was, it was packed worse than the subway. Yes, it really was. So pay the extra money and go in the morning. Yes, or they also have an, an, an evening option. Ooh, yeah, I forgot about that. They, they did have that, um, and I don't remember why we picked it. There was some reason why. I think it was because we wanted the ability to stay in the museum afterwards mm -hmm. versus at night. You go in there afterwards, and I think they send you out. I also think it might have been the cost. Yeah, maybe. Might have been the Could cost. Could have been. Anyway, we try to be budget conscious when mm -hmm. we can. One of the other things that we did that I really liked is we went to... I think it's called the Non-Catholic Cemetery to see the Angel of Grief. And that's a very famous uh, gravestone mm -hmm. that is replicated around the world. And we took the subway over there, walked to it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put pictures yeah. of it below. That was a, a pretty cool cemetery. There's lots of cats there. Yeah. And I think John Keats is buried there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I personally like going to cemeteries. We yeah. Pretty much go to cemeteries every time most cities we go to cemeteries and i would definitely go to that again it was probably see uh. he he just humors me <laughs> um and does some of the stuff yeah. i like that was probably like a 30 40 minute uh something like that it wasn't long but it was free yeah it was fine it cost it maybe a donation yeah we we they asked for donations we gave them some money it's yeah. a nice little cemetery yeah. but yeah. you know okay yeah, and those were the main things I liked. Yeah, and we also spent a lot of time just walking around the city, Lots going to the time. different plazas. Mm -hmm. You know, we popped into a couple of different churches. Mm -hmm. um, we went to the Altar of the Father Land, you know, the big, huge memorial. Oh, I forgot about and, that. And, uh, you know, that was nice. We just They just had a one-way walking route. Um, you can go on the roof. They have an elevator there, but they charge something like, I don't know, like 15 or 18 euros a person. They charged more than I wanted to pay to, to go get on the roof. Yeah. I, I thought about it, but I was like, meh. Yeah, that was good. I, but it was nice. I had forgotten about that. It was good. Yeah. So now the question is, would you go back to Rome? No. <laughs> I would go back to Rome. It was one of the cities, like, I could see myself, like, actually spending, like, longer periods of time in. Uh, just because I had, um, it felt safe. It was mm -hmm. comfortable. Yeah, our Airbnb was good too overall. Yeah, um, it was a good location. And I really do think the Airbnb plays into how nice your stay is. So don't uh, yeah. go so cheap that you have a crappy Airbnb that you're miserable. I mean, I understand why people like Rome. It's very nice. It's clean. There's a lot to do there. It's also in the summer at least very crowded, very hot. Um, we weren't there in the summer. No, we weren't there in the summer. But I just, I mean, I just. I don't know. There's so just, many places to go. There are so many places to go, and while I liked Rome, I didn't leave there thinking, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I liked it, but, for example, I didn't like it as much as Naples. I love Naples. Rome like, was okay. Naples was awesome. But, I, li I liked Rome better. Yeah, she's wrong. I, she's, he's wrong. <laughs> 
anyway, uh, at least we can agree to disagree, mm -hmm. and we will hopefully agree on where to go next. Yep. We're still kind of struggling with that, to be honest <laughs> with you. So we'll keep you posted on that. And we hope you have a, a great week. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next Thursday. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the things. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.